Hey guys, welcome back to I guess what is now going to be a reading vlog series ongoing thing. Can you settle? Okay, well there's a cattail. Um, so today is Tuesday again. I think this is pretty much when I'm going to start a lot of them out. I will probably go Tuesday to Sunday. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about what I've read since Sunday what I'm reading and then we'll check in later on in the week because you guys seem to really like this. Uh, it was like extremely positive feedback in the comments which I'm pretty happy with because I feel like this is a much more attainable way for me to discuss what I'm reading um, as opposed to wrap-ups because I read a lot. So starting on Sunday night basically from when you guys saw the end of my last reading vlog up till now I have read A Burning this book was a doozy. Um, this book was bleak and depressing. I mean, it was poignant and timely, but it was not a happy tale. Um, so if any of you guys got this from Book of the Month, just to let you know, it's a harrowing journey. Um, this book takes place in India around a bombing on a train. And we follow three different perspectives. We follow our main character, who is uh, Jivan. Jivan. Um, who is a Muslim girl from the slums who ends up getting accused of being part of this terrorist act on the train because she made a comment on Facebook about it. And that's it. That's the only evidence they have. And they literally throw her in jail for a year before her trial comes up. So we're following that situation, but we are also following P.T. Sir, who is her gym teacher and how he kind of gets involved in it. And we are also following Lovely, who is a transgender actress, like up and coming actress that um, Jivan was helping to teach English to. So that's how she's included in it. Um, and it just kind of follows the timeline from when the bombing happens up until like her trial period. Um, and it's heavy. It covers a lot of very um, important, I guess, social issues that are very present in India. This was one of the first books that I've ever read it that's actually set in India. So that was pretty eye-opening to me. Um, I gave it three stars. I think the writing was actually really, really good. Um, for how bleak the subject matter, I think it held my attention the entire time. But man, this was not an upper. <laughs> this was such a downer of a book. And it's supposed to be. Like, if that's the purpose of the book, to, like, invoke feelings of um, anger and frustration over the justice system and current social issues then uh, achieved. Check. That was done. But man, this was not a fun ride. So I read this. Three stars. What else have I read? I read... Oh, okay. So I read half of this in the store while I was waiting for an order to be processed for me. But I ended up listening to Good Talk by um, Mira Jacob. So this is an interesting story. This is one of those mi mixed media graphic novels, kind of. It's a memoir and conversations, but the actual physical book has a ton of just like imagery and pictures and like conversations in very short paragraphs. Um, and the audiobook is done as like a full cast. So this is a very cool version of storytelling. Um, so it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Illuminae or The Themis Files, um, where it has an entire full cast. It has sound effects and music. Um, and then the actual physical version has a lot of pictures and a lot of mixed media in it. But this is kind of like a graphic novel slash poetry version in my mind. Like it's written in sh very short conversations. Like it literally will just be like a five line conversation between her and her son or her and her husband. Um, and this one actually also followed an Indian American woman and her entire experience of being raised as an Indian American and all of the racial injustices that she encountered um, through her lifetime, but also raising a mixed race son because her husband is white and the conversations that she has with like a six-year-old about race. So this is one of those books that has shown up a lot in the recommended reading issues um, over the course of BLM. It's not necessarily focusing just on black lives, but just um, any sort of person of color and the conversations that you would have to have with your child living in America. It's heartbreaking, but it's also hilarious at the same time. Like, it's one of those really good blends of, like, really funny conversations where it kind of, like, pokes fun at racial issues in a lighthearted way, but it gets really real really fast. I gave it five stars. I thought it was unbelievable, both in physical form and audio. 
I don't know which one I would recommend more. I think the physical form you'll take more away from because you can see a lot of what they're talking about. But the audio version was really good just because, like, it sounded like there was a kid talking with his mom. Like, it was amazing. Five stars. Highly recommend. Just for a very quick um, glimpse into racial injustice in America. I'm gonna apologize. I don't know if you can see out the window. It's currently like seven o'clock, so it's still light out, but it is storming something fierce. And I think the rain just started, but it's been thundering. So if you hear that, that's what that is. Uh, apologies. It's a very ominous night. I'm sitting here. This is, let me show you my setup. I've got like a diamond painting going on. Like I've got all of my stuff over here and I literally just started a new one and I am so excited. So that's literally what I'm doing. So I figured I would check in as I'm about to start other books. So those are the two books that I've read um, or I listened to Sunday and Monday. Um, but I also technically started my book club read of the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. This is my first Jemisin book, and I have a feeling this is going to be the summer of Jemisin for me because I'm, I've reached the point now where it's all that I want to talk about, it's all that I want to read, so prepare yourself. So I'm going to talk about this for a second. So, as of right now, I am here. I am exactly halfway through the book. I'm on chapter 13. I haven't read dense fantasy or sci-fi in quite some time. I just haven't been in the mood for it. It's not what I can focus on. It's not what, it's not what my heart is telling me to read. I'm a mood reader. So this was intimidating going into it because this is a very well loved. It won the Hugo Award. I'm pretty sure all three books in this trilogy have won the Hugo Award in the years that they came out. Um, this is a high praise fantasy story. It's kind of sci-fi. I don't know which one it qualifies as. Right now it's feeling very fantasy, but there's some sci-fi-ish elements. All that I can tell you right now where my brain is with this is uh, the first section, confusion. You just kind of get tossed into this world with very little context and you're following three different perspectives. You don't know who any of these three people are or where they are in the world or what the world is and what's going on. Confusion, day one. Day two, started to figure out, started to look into reviews to explain everything, and all of a sudden it's clicking. Like the light bulb has lit up, it is illuminated, we're understanding things now. Um, so I just finished section three today, uh, which brings me to like the halfway point of this book, and it's all I want to read now. Like I'm really struggling to not just binge through the rest. I'm trying to be good, and I'm trying to read each section as I broke it down. It's my book club. I feel like I should be able to follow my own rules, but I want to break them real bad. So this, how do we, I mean, if you've read this, you kind of know where I'm struggling. Like I said, we're following three different perspectives in this world where we kind of have like crazy earthbenders. Okay, that's how I'm describing it. I get a lot of Avatar vibes from this, but like real dark, depressing Avatar vibes. Um, there are these people called Origins who are origins, according to the audiobook, I don't know, um, who have the ability to basically, like, cause earthquakes or, like, solve earthquakes from happening in this world that goes through some, like, really intense seasons. Like, there's an earthquake season, there's, like, an acid season, and we're in a quake season right now, so these origins are supposed to, like, stop these crazy huge things from happening and, like, ruining the world. But they're forbidden. Like, we've got the forbidden magic trope thing, even though these people are literally, like, saving the world, you're not allowed to have the power. Like, I don't really understand that part of it yet, but so we're following um, one person whose son was murdered by her husband, and she's, like, on a journey, and she found a kid who I'm assuming came out of a geode. I don't know how to describe this book, okay? <laughs> um, we're following her. She's a storyline that I don't quite understand yet, but we're also following Demaya, who is one of these origins, and she's a child and is being taken to the Fulcrum, which is like a magical academy to train and have control over these like earth-bending powers. Um, because if you don't have control over it, you gotta die. But you're also really needed in this world to keep it going. I I don't know yet. Um, and then we're also following, um, what's the third one? Cyanite, who is at this academy, is like an adult, is pretty powerful, but is under the like tutelage of like a super crazy powerful earthbender origin person. And she's like, kind of being put into the field for the first time. So she's, like, on the road with him, and he's helping her, like, do her job, I guess. How bad am I at explaining this book? 
Basically, how bad that description was is where my brain is with this. I have very little concept of what's actually happening, but the writing is so good and I can't stop reading it. Like, now it's all that I want to do. And I'm so excited that this is a trilogy that is already out and complete so that I can just binge straight through it. So this is what I'm working on. I will be able to give you guys like a full conclusive thought process by the end of this vlog because I will have finished it by then. Uh, hopefully it'll be slightly more cohesive than this. Sorry for that in advance. Um, other things. This is just gonna be a really long uh, talking process right now. I apologize. Um, the book that I just finished, like right before I hit record, is When We Were Vikings by Andrew David McDonald. This book, I don't know, I probably should have like waited to talk about this when I've like come up with actual thoughts because I literally just finished this. So this is not a good time to review a book. This follows um, Zelda is our main character. She is 21 years old and she has fetal alcohol syndrome. So she's, I, I know very little about this and I feel like I should do a lot of research before I talk about it, but here we go. Please correct me if I'm wrong because this is foreign territory to me, but it kind of reads like she is on the autism spectrum. Um, and she just has a really intense focus on Vikings. Like that is her chosen thing to be obsessed with. It's all that she talks about, it's all she cares about. She is a Viking and she kind of runs her like household with her brother um, like they are a tribe. And that's, that's how her life is. This basically follows her and her relationship with her brother and just her life as it's going on um, and learning how to be an adult um, with some disability included in that. And it's hard to read. I haven't read a book like this since I read the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime because we are reading from the perspective of somebody who has mental disabilities um and it's fascinating and it reads so fluidly like it is so well done and you just you feel for her because you know what's actually happening around her even though she isn't aware of what's going on around her and it's heartbreaking um, because her parents aren't in the picture anymore it's basically just her and her brother and her brother is making some bad choices and it's starting to be brought into her life. And it's it's hard to read and it's it's really icky at times, but it was done so well. So I don't know where my thoughts are gonna lie with this just because one, I kind of want to do some research into how authentic the voice is for fetal alcohol syndrome because it's something that I really don't know anything about. So I kind of want to look into that before I talk more about this. I think this story was brilliantly done, but that again could change if maybe it's not good representation. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, right now I'm sitting at four stars just because I think it was such a beautifully told story and it was so hard and gripping to get through. Um, but I liked it. Like I really love Zelda. She is like such a cool protagonist to read from. So I just finished that. Um, I am currently, what am I listening to? because I am about to start um, working on this diamond painting because that's literally what my night is going to be. And I'm so excited. <laughs> it's storming outside. I've got the house to myself. And I'm just going to listen to an audiobook and uh, stick some rhinestones to a sticker sheet. It's going to be great. Um, as of right now, oh, I did actually start listening to the audiobook of All Creatures Great and Small by James Harriet. I've never read James Harriet books, and I feel like as somebody who works in the veterinary field, and as somebody who just loves animals in general, has my own farm and everything, I feel like this is a book, and all of his books are just books that I should have read at this point in my life. Um, I'm a quarter of the way through it, and I'm loving it. It's just stories of like a new vet who lives like in London. So like UK veterinary practices, which are pretty cool. And it's just like his memoirs kind of of being a new vet in like a London countryside town where he's working on like farm animals, like large animals, small animals. And it's just little snippets of him as a vet. And I love it. This is definitely not going to be everybody's cup of tea because he obviously talks about a lot of like gross medical things but it's fascinating to me so I just I love it because I feel like I've worked with so many old school really cool tough old vets um 
in all of my years working with horses and just having pets in general, I, I just love like seeing their experiences. And I feel like that's what this is in book form. So I'm loving that. That's what I've been reading, what I am currently reading. And I will let you guys know my final thoughts on a lot of this stuff later on in the week when I've actually made some progress. So it's Wednesday, like the following Wednesday. It's been a, over a week at this point. I generally try and do these updates Tuesdays and Sundays because those are my filming days, but uh, that everything was up in the air this week because of the whole husband not working from the mountain biking accident. And he's fine as I'm speaking. Um, he already got his stitches out and he's back to normal and doing ridiculous stuff again. So life is starting to resume, but that meant he was out of work for a while. So my filming days were just non-existent this past week. So, um, this is going to be an update and I will just pick up my next week's reading vlog, I guess, uh, whenever I get around to filming it and I'll just kind of catch you up from this point to then. So update on what I've been reading. I also have a couple packages to open. I went to my PO box um, yesterday and picked those up. So I wanted to open those for you guys during this video as well. I know that I need to give you an update that I finished the fifth season masterpiece. Um, one of the best fantasy stories or I guess introduction to fantasy stories because it's the first of a trilogy um, that I've ever read. It's one of those books that makes me feel guilty giving other books five stars because I feel like this one was so intricate and amazing and masterful and it was just oh, great. Um, very confusing at first. That was my only uh, qualm with it, but I feel like it was on purpose and well intentioned um, to just kind of toss you in where you are and you literally unravel the story as the characters do, which I think is well done in this one. I don't like that in a lot of books, but very well done in this one. This may very well just be the summer that I read through Jemison because I am sold just from the one book and no wonder her books have won so many things. Do you guys also want to see something else I've gotten recently? Um, this, oh, oh, can you, can you see it? I'm this pet parent. I just bought a window seat for my cat who is just conked the heck out. Can you wake up? You can't be bothered. You can't be bothered. Show the camera your beautiful self. Yeah, there's a fluffy belly. I acquired this this week. So there's Willow just doing her thing. In case you guys were curious, Willow still exists, but this is her life now. Um, hello. Anyway, oh, let's, let's go back up a bit. Uh, so <laughs> let's start opening packages and I'll just keep talking as we go. Um, I should have pulled up Goodreads to give you guys full updates. Ooh, I did finish All Creatures Great and Small. That was a long book. Um, it's definitely a book that you can read in like snippets because it's kind of memoirs. I'm sorry for my dog drinking in the background. This is just my life. Um, but it's definitely a book that you can read in like little tiny sections because every chapter or every section is literally just like a little story of his vet days. Um, so all of them are kind of individual, but I think that is definitely like a quintessential book to read if you are in any way considering getting into the veterinary field, just because it shows you really old school medicine and I loved it. And I feel like I've worked with vets, um, like him before. Like, I feel like I've worked with a lot of large animal old school vets who like really believe in their old practices, um, which is hit or miss for me because sometimes they're really resistant to modern medicine that has clearly evolved over time, but uh, their, their stories are the best because you'll get like the best real life experience from them of practicing in the field, like in people's barns for like decades. Oh, I loved it. So I gave that four stars. Um, I need some scissors to cut into these. Hold on. So this first package I just tore open is from Hungry. Um, so that's interesting. And I don't know what it is. The quirky hedgehog. Oh, these are cute. Okay, so if these are from, well, I have three from thrift books and I have one from an Etsy shop, I guess. These generally don't come with notes. So if you sent me any of these things, let me know so that I can properly thank you. Kindness is free. Sprinkle that stuff everywhere from the quirky hedgehog. Oh, I just saw oh, 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 their little magnetic bookmarks. These are so cute. Who sent these to me? There's no note in here. Oh my God, these are so cute. We have a little Luna and a little Mandrake. 
and it says property of Hogwarts greenhouse. This, I love this. Luna is my favorite and I love plants. These are so cute. So these are from the quirkyhedgehog.com. Thank you, whoever sent these to me. Oh my God, those are so cute. Okay, um, let's get into books. I'm gonna keep talking as I cut things open. I don't think these have tear tabs. Um, so I also read The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert, who wrote Little and Lion. And Brandy Colbert um, is a really good author that I feel like is very underhyped. Um, Little and Lion kind of like put her on the map. There's a lot of middle grade and young adult books that are phenomenal. And that one, I gave it four stars. Um, this is definitely a story that is going to normalize a lot of um, Black Live issues, specifically surrounding voting and um, voter suppression and things like that. But it handles it in a very like lighthearted, very short way. Like it's a story that takes place on election day. Um, and it's just following a girl who is very adamant about voting and um, her trying to help this boy that she meets at the poll get to his voting place and all of the things that happen. So I gave it four stars because I feel like it gave a really good glimpse into what is very important for today's youth. Um, the only thing that bothered me about it is her cat goes missing over the course of this like one day period that the book takes place. And like, she's not, she's panicking. She's very upset, but she's not spending the entire day looking for this cat like I would. So that removed me a bit from the story. Like it's a big part of the story, but it was just something that I was like, if that happened, I would be losing my goddamn mind. Like if one of my pets got loose and was just out, I wouldn't do anything else. Like everything else would be put on the back burner. So that's a thing. But um, this is another one of those books that I feel like just shows um, what black people are raised to deal with as far as dealing with police. And it's just a very quick scene and it's touched on very briefly in the story, but I feel like normalizing um, how terrifying police encounters can be for people of color is something that really needs to be brought to the light, especially in books, because I feel like that's something that I didn't know as a privileged white person. I didn't know how bad it was. A lot of the stuff, I was aware of it, but I didn't realize how deeply rooted it is in like family dynamics of how you interact with the police, because that's something that I've never had to deal with. So this is a book that literally just kind of shows a scene of getting pulled over and how horrifying it is. Um, to black people versus what it would be like for me. Like I would still be super anxious because hello, social anxiety, but it's nowhere near as life threatening for me. So um, this book specifically, obviously The Hate You Give talks about that. That's the main source of that book. And also um, Grip by Kennedy Ryan are the three stories that really show exactly what in the moment is like. And I think it was done so well. And I think that needs to just be incorporated into a lot of books to help normalize what it's like. Um, so that's the thing that is in that book that I would highly recommend checking out. I feel like it's a very impactful story to come out. It doesn't really get into politics in any way, shape or form. Like it's not set right now. We're not dealing with like American elections right now. Um, but it basically just showcases the importance of getting out and voting, which is key right now <laughs> in 2020. All right, let's get into this first package. What is this? What is this? This looks amazing. Dragon and Thief, the first dragon back adventure from the author of Manta's Gift by Timothy Zahn. This just gave me so many 90s flashbacks. This looks exactly like a book that I would have picked off of the shelf in a library as like a 10 year old. What is this about? Called dragon back because Jack Morgan has a dragon on his back, literally. We think of dragons as enormous fire breathing, flying creatures of myth, but in Jack's universe, dragons, or more precisely, the dragon like it's it's K apostrophe D A, are big, but they also depend on being in a symbiotic relationship with a humanoid. That sounds so good. He's literally on his back. So we don't ride dragons, the dragons ride us. Interesting. Thank you whoever sent this to me. Thrift Books never sends notes or anything. So uh, I'm never gonna know. If this was from you, uh, reach out to me because this sounds so good. That sounds so good. Okay, next we have this book. This feels like a, another paperback. Um, let me keep going. What else have I read? Um, I finally finished Beach Read by Emily Henry. I started that like a month ago and put it down. Not for any particular reason other than I just like, I don't know, I was bored in the middle of it and I had other things that I wanted to get to. Um, I wasn't disliking it or anything. Um, so I finished it. I 
gave it three stars. I think this book is very polarizing. A lot of people really, really loved it. And a lot of people were just kind of meh about it. I think I'm falling more in the latter category. Um, it was okay. <laughs> the end. Let's see. What is this? Ooh, Robin. <gasps> oh, man. I haven't read this in so long. Sunshine by... Okay, so Sunshine by Robin McKinley is one of the quintessential vampire stories um, that exists. And I don't think I've ever owned a physical copy of this. I also haven't read this since, God, when did this even come out? How old am I? 2003. So I read this probably when I was like 13 or 14, when I was in my peak vampire paranormal obsessed phase. Ooh, I'm going back to this. Oh man, Pretty Much Perfect by Neil Gaiman. This is, I included this in my vampire recommendations video that I made years ago that is still getting views. Like, I don't know how that video entered the rest of the world, but um, people are still finding that. Oh, this is, I'm gonna reread this. I have an entire series of videos, like reading blogs kind of planned that this is gonna fit in perfectly with. Thank you so much, whoever sent this to me. Um, get to this last one. It's a little paperback and I, it feels adorable. It's very tiny and cute. So thank you so much for that one. Um, okay. What was I talking about? Featured three stars. Yeah, it was okay. Um, it was kind of interesting. I feel like if I were a writer, like if I were an author, I probably would have appreciated it more because it really got into like writing things like writer's block and dealing with it. This book is yellow, like old school yellow. Like it yellowed over time. What is this? What is this? The Pride of Channer? Channer. Um, by CJ Sharon. I can't get over this cover. I'll share it with you guys in a second. I just have to take this in. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> All right, look at this cover. Just like explore this with me. So who is this? What are these? And why are they holding guns and communicators? Also what's going on in the background? What are these? These look like skeletal versions of um, droids from Star Wars. What is this? Um, no one at Meat Point Station had ever seen a creature like the Outsider. Naked, hided, blunt-toothed, and blunt-figured, Tully is a sole surviving member of his community, a communicative, space-faring species hitherto unknown. Hitherto, that's a good word. We should start saying that more often. And he was a prisoner of his discoverer slash captors, the sadistic, treacherous Kif, until his escape onto the Hani ship the pride of Shanor. Little did he know when he threw himself upon the mercy of the pride and her crew that he put the entire Hani species in jeopardy and imperiled the peace of the compact itself. For the information this fugitive held could be the ruin or glory of any species of the meat point station. What was that? What is, what is this even about? Who sent this to me? Because I have so many questions. One, why? What made you think of me when sending this um first printing from january of 1982 i am so intrigued okay this was a ride who sent me these books please i need to talk to you i'm excited about them thank you so much all right i've been talking way too much this video but what i am currently reading is um the player next door by k.a tucker this is k.a tucker's newest release this is the romance book that we're reading in the page turners which is my book club i host over on facebook um and as of ignore the bookmark i just literally tossed it in the book because cricket stole it from the book um i am almost finished today's section which would bring me up to this point like from the end like i have one section to go Ah, it's not as good as The Simple Wild, but it's so good. Um, I feel like Kay Tucker, like, peaked with The Simple Wild. Her other stuff is nowhere near as, like, emotionally intelligent, um, but this is definitely a quintessential, like, really good, fun, um, fluffy romance. It's kind of second chance. It's your neighbor. It's small town. It's girl who moves in, and her... Um, crush from high school lives next door to her and um, just everything that's involved in that. And it's starting to get steamy. Um, I am probably just going to binge through and finish it today. So I am reading that. So that's going to be it. Sorry, this one was like all over the place. Um, but thank you to the people who sent me things. If you sent me these little bookmarks or the books, please reach out to me so that I can say thank you and talk to you about them. 
Um, and that's gonna be it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the start of my next one. I might honestly start it tonight. We'll see. I'll see you then.